Jeez. And went back. My sister used to golf with uh, Patty Santos up here in uh, Sonoma County. Golf. Yeah. They liked to golf together. Patty was great. It's a beautiful day. Man, this is great. I remember like all the people I used to pay to go see I wound up playing with. This is like a big fantasy. I used to see Merle, I used to sneak into the orphanage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On Montgomery Street. Oh, good. Remember that? Down the street yeah. from the playbook. Yeah, though. yeah. I was, I don't know, 15. That's, isn't that the where they had the girls swinging in the swing? Yes. Yeah. Those were the days. The halfway nude lady, you'd go in this place and this, she's swinging into this. Swing goes back and forth and you go downstairs into this club. Yeah, Jerry and I used to play there as we stood in the stairway about an hour and looked. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been something to be a 15-year-old wow. bass player in that situation. Just I used to just go sneak in. And, you know, they never... I used to go to the Fillmore on Friday and then the Saturday I used to get up and go to the beach and scrub the floors at the family dog to get in free. Well, I used to deliver a paper at the Fillmore. <laughs> yeah, 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 no right. kidding, no kidding. At the Fillmore, yeah. I delivered papers. You guys are lucky. You grew up in a good town. I was yeah, the, oh, I was great. Right there, Fillmore and Gary, I delivered a paper there. <laughs> and there was one lady there that was the police lady, police woman, and she would let me stand right there at the curtain. I remember there was a band that I really liked to see. Is the, is the I guess I'm going to tell my age, the Four Blazers. But the piano player was blew me away, and his name was... Um, I'm trying to think of his, uh, can't even think of his name now. He's from Oakland. He's from here. Oh, he'll kill me. I couldn't. Can't help you there. Don't use this part, Ken. <laughs> yeah, don't use this part, please. Sweet <laughs> senility sets in. Yeah. He lives around Brooklyn. He plays. He plays. He, he, uh, he's, he's, he loves the track. Oh, Charles Brown. Charles oh, Brown. Charles Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't use this. <laughs> Charles will kill. Tell that story again. And remember. <laughs> okay. One more time. One more time. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I used to stand. I used to stand at this um, curtain and watch the Four Blazers and Charles Brown was playing piano. What it also amazed me, they were all dressed in white, you know, and had these tuxedos, and this guy's big bluesy velvet voice and I would stand there and just behind this curtain and peep out and see Charles Brown at the Fillmore then that was during the uh, 50s oh uh, God. <laughs> yeah Charles and uh, I had a paper out there so they would let me stand there and uh, actually it was uh, before the 50s it was in the 40s. how old are you huh <laughs> well it goes way back <laughs> um I used to wear a little red suit and white beard. <laughs> and just come down the uh, chimneys. <laughs> just like Jack Benny say, 39. You know, I'm on February 14th, I pick up where Jack Benny left off. <laughs> well, I think that was one of the great contributions to the culture that the psychedelic 60s made was that you didn't have to all dress up the same. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe the dead took it too far by you know, just wearing nothing but t-shirts and stuff. It was, it was great because you can go pay three fifty and see three bands that are totally different, uh, you know, uh, and get all these outlooks. Wow! I think uh, my my experience was uh, when I was in New York playing and I was getting ready to go back to the West Coast and I was doing some playing with Miles Davis then. Oh! And uh, Miles said, I said, "You're getting ready to go back to coast." He says, "Don't forget to look up the dead. The grateful dead." The reason why I come to think of it, the Grateful Dead, Miles opened for the Grateful Dead at the Fillmore. Oh God! And Bill yes, Graham in April of 1970. That's right. Yes. Oh. And the yes. Dead guys said, missed all yes. The so I mean, this is you know. So Miles remembered that, and when he says, "You look up, you look up the dead. You want to do some plan when you go home." And that's when I, you know, I just ran into Jerry in the studio. You know. They would have a contest of who didn't play with the Grateful Dead. Yeah. <laughs> And so, uh, wow. Yeah. Well, the first show I ever saw at the film where I was about 12 was uh, uh, Butterfield Blues Band, <laughs> Charles Lloyd Quintet, oh. and the Ultimate Spinach, which was a psychedelic yes. band out of uh, Look at that. Boston. Now, listen to that. That's incredible. Yeah. That's was, incredible. I think Jeff Baxter was one of their guitarists. So they went on to, yeah. But, yeah. 
I mean, I had no idea what I was seeing there, but yeah. that was a, you know, Charles Lloyd. Yeah. Butterfield. Mm-hmm. Boy, did I get my little mind blown by that. that yeah, got your apple and your next week hand bill. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but I was yeah. too young to get it. I was living down well, in Kansas. I was a kid. I couldn't get up there, you know. We can take our hats off to the almighty Bill Graham for yeah. for putting that. He, he knew just what he was doing. He's a, a outrageous man. is still well missed, you know, but uh, they're doing a great job. It, Grateful Dead Productions, but we still miss him. It's <laughs> true. Presence. And he had yeah. he had the nerve to put bills together like that. Yes, people. yes. And he, he knew it would work. He tried to turn he that audience on. Yes, he knew it. He was into educating his audience. He, uh, he knew how to treat the musicians. He, the musicians, uh, you know, when they went to the dressing room, everything was taken care of. You know, you didn't have to worry about towels, food. Everything was there. You know? And everybody wanted to open for Otis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And everybody showed up, even if they didn't get to play. They all showed but up. But do you remember the uh, the uh, toilet bowl they used to have there, Winterland? No, I wasn't part of that. Oh, so. they, they, at the end of the at the end of the uh, concert, they play football, and they and uh, they call it the toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Every concert? At the end of the gig. At the end of the yeah. gig, yeah. The only Bill would think of things like they would play touch football on that, that big, you know, hundred is just the oh, same, same yeah. as a, 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 a field. I know? was on the other side of the fish tank. I was in the yeah. audience. I never yeah. got to like hang. Yeah, me neither. I used to go later. I used to go all the time though. I, I ran I ran into Bill's uh, sense of sportsmanship. Uh, one of the New Year's runs in the Coliseum, I got drafted to play on his volleyball team. Oh. Big mistake. Yes. <laughs> because I, our team didn't win, oh. and I was I didn't take it, apparently didn't take it seriously enough. Oh. I, I didn't draw blood from anybody. So, <laughs> and after that, Peter Barsotti took so much shit from Bill for several days ah. for bringing me <laughs> <out of here. laughs> the dupes had the wrath of Bill more than a couple of times we made the real bad mistake of not even going to a lunch meeting about the possibility of Bill uh, managing the tubes and we didn't even have the lunch with the guy we already made up our minds big mistake so we tra- traditionally played uh, New Year's Eve gig somewhere in the city, and Bill Graham would put it on. So this next time we were in San Jose, and he's talking about taking care of the band. He took care of us real good. Yeah. Oh, hot dogs and tacos. <laughs> <laughs> he told tacos and we too. Were in San Jose. He didn't mean that, Bill. <laughs> San Jose, <laughs> but cold, yeah, tacos, it was and cold tacos and hot dogs. <laughs> There's your goddamn lunch. <laughs> Don't mess with the man. Yeah. Oh man. The Wrath of Bill. <laughs> That's a whole other two-hour show there. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Right. Everybody have to have the blue dot over their face and their voices disguised. I feel honored <laughs> to have uh, been able to play so many Bill Graham gigs when I was told back oh, when the tubes opened for Led Zeppelin at Keysar Stadium that we'd never, ever play again for as long as we live. Why? What did you guys do wrong? We were throwing sacks of flour in the stage, fake Coke and fake Quaaludes, and... Uh, <laughs> and Bill uh, Spooner mentioned something about don't eat the brown potato chips. And Bill uh, had just gone through a big scene about, you know, no drugs and stuff. And even though it was a joke, he wasn't taking it all that funny because he had Herbie Herbert, who was managing us at the time, almost in tears, you know. But by the time we left the stage, uh, it had blown over. But during the middle of our set, he was exclaiming that we'd never work in this town again. So. Yeah. I grew my hair longer, and he never knew who I was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, That's what I did, too. No. <laughs> it's a good man, very good man. We did that. I think the, the most exciting thing was this snack concert, you know. Oh, yeah. That was just the most... It was incredible. We, we, pra- we practiced over Bob Bobby's house, you know, and with Crosby and everybody. And I think um, the day of the concert, Crosby never showed up because his wife gave birth that day. As a, I was a, but uh, just playing that particular energy was so high that day. It was just. That was the great. Well, there were three keyboard players. Yes, yes, there were three keyboard players. It was just outrageous. And all that music we'd never heard before. Oh, have you you never heard it? Well, no, the day that that came out, I mean, the Dead had stopped playing in yeah. October, and gone into the studio and started developing this amazingly 
you know, weird new stuff. And what was played that day was this Blues for Allah jam with the Stronger Than Dirt in the middle of it. And it was, it was all material that we'd not heard before. And then, yeah. you know, it's like 35 minutes of new improvised out thereness, yeah. followed by Johnny B. Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a hell of a day. And the Dewey yeah. Brothers and Neil Young and Bob Dylan. And wow. Oh. Even yeah. had Willie Mays. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Mays came down, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah lots of, uh, that's right, then Marlon Brando gave us yeah, a speech. Oh, it was, every, it, was, it, was every, it was just a great day. Wild day. That's, that was the uh, magic of Bill. Chutzpah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what this town has been, how we've gotten by without him since then. Really. Yeah, we've, they've even thought of doing other concerts there. You know, it would be great because they've, they've done it, the stadium over again. It's down to 10,000. It's a yeah. lot smaller. Now. Yeah, it's smaller. It would be a great place for to do a concert, you know, but uh, I don't know. I think the neighborhood has a bit of a toot about that. Yeah. Was that Kizar? Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful new. Oh, it's a beautiful they were complaining from miles away when he slides up with us. And playing. rightly so. Yeah. I mean, it was, wow. it was pretty crazy. I, I went there that right after that. They had a dead show there with the new writers and Waylon Jennings. Wow. Mm. That was a, used to go there another big day. And the 49ers used to play. He used to cut out the back well, of the milk carton. Well, I'm an ex Polytechnic. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was my home team. Yeah. 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 So, right. I did that I used too. To, Share the lockers with the 49ers when I was a teenager when yeah. I played football there at Kizar. These guys got to do all the Yeah, no, they, yeah. Had, they used to have the, the Turkey Day game there. Yeah, Turkey, they still, turkey have, day that. Game, they still yeah. have that. Yeah. Big San Francisco thing. I think uh, I played with guys like St. Clair, Bob St. Clair. I used to tackle yeah. him when he was, he was, six, he was six, seven, 260 pounds, high school kid. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he became a 49er. But that's yeah. one of the guys I when I was 16, changed my mind. I, I better get serious with my music. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about Yeah, you're going to hurt a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> you need the use of all your fingers for that. Lose <laughs> them in sports. Wow. Well, I hate to say it, but we should probably move on to uh, getting some music on today. Yeah, Fauci's right. out there dying to bring the gear in. Well, thank you, pause. Studio E. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, lovely so, hang. Wow. Great stories, you guys. You got that all on videotape?